history of the Cotton Bowl. 50 years and so many great moments and a man who has been associated with the Cotton Bowl through so many years. In fact, over at CBS Radio right now, Lindsey Nelson is working on his 26th Cotton Bowl broadcast. So when it was time for us to take a look back at all the golden memories, there was only man who could do it justice. Just one, Lindsey Nelson. If stadiums could only talk, what memories they could recite of days gone by, yesterday's heroes, moments won and lost in the sun. This marvelous stadium was first built in 1930, and over the past 50 years has housed one of college football's classic New Year's Day events, the Cotton Bowl. But it was not always the showcase that it is today. The Cotton Bowl Classic was started in 1937 by a Dallas entrepreneur, J. Curtis Sanford. The first Cotton Bowl featured Marquette University versus TCU. Tickets were $2.20, and Curtis Sanford promised each team $10,000. Frank Murray's Marquette squad was one of the nation's best. They were led by All-American Buzz Bubitt, while TCU counted with slinging Sammy Ball. The game was expected to be a high-scoring affair, but neither Ball nor Bubitt were the biggest stars, that honor belonged to Little Dutch Meyer, a third team in and the nephew of TCU head coach Dutch Meyer. The year was 1946. Texas would meet Missouri and one young Texan would stand tall that day. He could run and kick, throw and catch like none before him. And that afternoon he would do it all, having a hand in all 40 Texas points. He wore number 33 that day, but forever will be remembered as old number 22, Bobby Lane. As long as people talk about bowl games, forever they will remember the improbable meeting of Tommy Lewis of Alabama and Dickie Magel of Rice. Dickie Magel takes off to the right. Walkers turn the flankers, and that clears Dickie for the outside. Now for the unexpected. From out of nowhere comes Tommy Lewis, and Magel is tipped down. I thought the, the right side of the stadium fell in on me. It was a spontaneous thing. He just saw me running for a touchdown and say, hey, I'm going to get this guy. In the years to come, the memory of the 54 Cotton Bowl would be more bittersweet for one than the other. But like Roy Regals, the names Tommy Lewis and Dickie Magel have a special place in the minds and hearts of college football fans everywhere. The 64 Cotton Bowl would pit the nation's top two teams, Darrell Royal's 10-0 Longhorns and Wayne Harden's 9-1 Midshipmen. In the first five minutes, Texas scored on two TD passes from Duke Carlisle to Phil Harris. After that, the great Texas defense teed off on Heisman Trophy winner Roger Staubach. There was very little doubt who was number one. Darrell Royal had his 28-6 victory and a national championship. The 70s would open with Notre Dame versus Texas. With time running out in the fourth period and Texas losing 17-14, Texas found itself with fourth down and two, decision time for Coach Darrell Royal and his quarterback. The game would be decided by this James Street pass to Cotton Fire. And all of a sudden I heard the roar come out of the far stands and I knew then that Spire had made obviously an unbelievable catch scooping the ball right off the ground in a pass reception that gave Texas four more opportunities to score. It wouldn't take four downs as Billy Dale raced in for the score, clinching the national championship for Darrell Royal's Texas Longhorns. In 1971, these two teams would meet again, but this time it would be Notre Dame's turn in the victory circle. Led by quarterback Joe Theismann, Notre Dame would produce 21 points in the first 16 and a half minutes. And Notre Dame would end one of the greatest streaks in college football, Texas's 30-game winning streak with a 24-11 victory. The 70 and 71 games added greatly to the rich history of the Cotton Bowl, for it brought together two schools with outstanding programs and two magnificent coaches and gentlemen. We didn't have even a hint of controversy or disagreement of any kind. And that's the way I like to, to, to coach. That's the way I like to play college football. And uh, I'm glad that Aaron and I had our two contests, and I think it came out about right, 50-50. 1979 featured Houston and Notre Dame in a very memorable game. An ice storm hit Dallas that year, and there is only one word to describe the weather, cold. Houston led 34 to 12 midway through the fourth quarter. But Joe Montana's passing and scrambling brought the Irish back. And with this two-point conversion to Chris Haynes, the Irish trailed 34 to 28, but Montana wasn't through. With two seconds on the clock, Montana rolled right, 
and unbelievably found Haynes again in the corner of the end zone. The miracle man had knotted the score at 34. And Joe Eunice's kick would secure one of the greatest comebacks ever. And so ended the decade of the 70s. In the 80s at the Cotton Bowl, the parade of stars continued. Pittsburgh Panthers brought in a quarterback named Dan Marino. They played the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University, who featured a running back named Eric Dickerson. And how he could run. And who could forget Georgia's John Lastinger and his dash from 17 yards out into the end zone to defeat 11-0 Texas and deny the national championship to Fred Akers Longhorn. And they gave Vince Dooley a ride off the field. And the little man who won the Heisman Trophy, Doug Flutie, with his magnificent talents, passing and running. If stadiums could only talk, what memories they could recite of days gone by, moments won and lost in the sun. The Cotton Bowl Classic is more than a game, and its rich tradition is more than the victories and defeats. What sets it apart are the people, leaders like Bob Cullum, Felix McKnight, and Field Scoville, players like Tommy Lewis and Dickie Magel, Lane, Walker, Campbell, and Flutie, coaches named Bryant and Bell, Neely and Nealon, Royal and Parsegian. They are the heart and soul. They and thousands of others have embraced this game for one simple reason, their genuine love of college football. And so do you, Curtis Sanford. We salute you for having the vision and courage to bring a football game to the city of Dallas. From Sammy Vaughn to Bo Jackson, it's been a great 50 years. Admiral Cotton Bowl.